hello in this video i will explain to you on how to find io here so that is the goal finding io the goal is to find io however we are asked by the problem to use mass analysis okay mass analysis and we will do it step by step right the first step that we need to do is to label all the loops in the circuit Okay, I think from the circuit here, we will have three loops, right? The first loop is this one here. And I will name this loop as I1. Okay, and then the second one, I will name this here as loop I2. And I will name this loop here as I3. Okay, and... I think we have done labeling all the loops. The second step is to do KVL. Do KVL, the Kirchhoff voltage law for all unknown loops. Okay, we have I1, I2, and I3 all unknown. So we should do KVL for all loops. And I think we can do first KPL at this I1 here. So we will do KPL at I1. Okay, KPL at I1. Okay, KPL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. However, no, not however. Let's start from this 2 ohm resistor. So we will have two here. And the only current that pass through it is I1, the only loop current that pass through it. So I will have I1 here to I1. And then here, our loop entering this 90 volt voltage source, and it's enter from the positive terminal. So we will have positive sign. We will have plus, and the value is 90 volt. So we will have 90 here. Good. Now let's move on to this 4 ohm resistor. So we have plus 4. And remember, we are working on I1. So I1 should always come first. So I will have 4 I1. But here I3, I3 is flowing to the opposite direction. See here, I1 flowing down. I3 is flowing up. So I will have I1 minus I3. Good. And then I will have this 1 ohm resistor. So I will have plus 1. And remember, I1 always came first. But here, I2 flowing to the opposite direction. If you see here, I1 flowing to the left, but I2 flowing to the right. So I will have minus I2. Good. And I think we have done all of the components, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. And we have four terms. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So all of that will equal to 0. Good. Now, what can we do from here? We do some math. Okay, I1 came from 3 term, 2 plus 4 plus 1, that will be 7 I1, 7 I1, and then I2 only came from this place, and I will have minus 1, right, so I'll have minus I2, and here I will have minus 4 I3, good, and let's move this plus 90 to the right hand side, so we will have minus 90. Good. Now, what can we do from here? Let's have this as equation number one. Okay, now let's do KPL at loop I2. However, we have some problem here that we have this 45 ampere current source. Why is it a problem? Because we need the voltage, right? We need the voltage here to do KPL, but we cannot know the voltage in this, across this current source. So we need to do something else. Okay, what we need to do is we use super loops that, uh, that does not contain this current source. Okay, maybe let's do the super loop like this. Okay, let's do super loop that goes around the edge like this so we will have this outside here as our super loop so that is our super loop 
So instead of doing KVL at loop I1, I2 and I3, we do KVL at this super loop. Okay, let's exactly do that. Let's do KVL at the super loop. Okay, let's see here. KPL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. Let's start from this 5 ohm resistor, then goes clockwise to these four components. Right? So I will have 5 ohm. 5 ohm. But the only current that passes through it is I2. For the inside current, for the loop current, I use the inside current. We always use the inside current, not the super loop. So I will have 5 i2 okay and then we will have plus 2 and the only current that pass through it is i1 right so i'll have 2 i1 good and now it enters from the positive terminal of this 90 volt voltage source so i'll have plus 90. let's move to the last component we will have 180 volt voltage source and the current flows from the positive terminal so i will have the positive sign right so i'll have plus 180 good and all of that here will equal to zero okay now let's do some math here so i will have 2i1 and then plus 5i2 and 90 plus 180 that will be 270 and all of that, let's move that to the right hand side. So I'll have minus 270. Okay, what can we do here? I think we can save this equation as equation number two. Okay, so far we have two equations, but we have three variables i1, i2, and i3. So what we need to do is to get another equation, right? Okay, but we cannot do KVL anymore. We cannot do KVL at I2 and we cannot do KVL at I1. Okay, maybe we resort to KCL, the Kirchhoff current law. Okay, I think we need to use this node here. Let's name this as node A. Okay, and because this is I3, the current in this cables here is also I3, right? So I will have I3, but then here I have I2 in this loop here. So the only current that pass through this branch here is also I2. But we have this current source. So this one here is the same as this current here, 45 ampere. So we can infer from KCL here. So we can do KCL at node A. Okay, what does KCL said? KCL said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out. Good. Now, what is the current that goes in? We will have I3 here. So, we will have I3. And then, that will equal to the currents that goes out. This one is going out here that goes up and the value we know it 45 ampere. So we'll have 45 and then the other currents that goes out is this current here which is I2. So I will have plus I2. We can move this I2 to the left hand side so we'll have minus I2 plus I3 that will equal to 45. Right, so this is equation number three. Okay, now we have three equations and three variables, right? We'll have this, this, and that. Okay, what can we do next? We need to, step number three, step number three, we need to solve the equation. Solve the equations. Okay, maybe let's clean up our slide a bit. Okay, now we have three equations and three variables. And I think the fastest way to solve this equation is by using calculator. Why? Because in the circuit analysis exams or tests, you usually can use calculator. So why not just to use that? 
for solving equations, right? Okay, let's see our calculator. So here it is. Uh, let's set this up as equation solver, this button, and equation solver is number 5. We need three variables, so that is number 2. And all we need to do is to plug in the coefficients. But we have to be careful because we have some zeros here, right? So we'll have 7 minus 1 and then minus 4. And the result will be minus 90. Okay. And then I will have this 2 I1, 5 I2. However, we have 0 I3 here. We have to be careful because I did not write 0 I3 here. So we'll have 0. And then I will have minus 270. Good. And then the last equation, remember that we have 0, I1 here. So I will have 0. And I will have minus 1 of I2. And then 1, I3. And all of that will equal to 45. And here we will have the x value is I1. Right? So I will have I1 is minus 20. I1 is minus 20. Ampere. But then what is I2? I2 is the y value. And that will be minus 46 ampere. And then what is I3? I3 is the z value, which is minus 1, minus 1 ampere. However, the goal is not finding I1, I2, and I3, but I O. So that is the final step of our analysis, which is answer the question okay how to find io then io here is this current that passed through this one ohm resistor so i have io okay and the loop current that have the same direction as io have the positive sign so i will have i2 so we'll have plus i2 actually but i just write it i2 and then here I1 is flowing to the opposite direction of IO. So I will have negative sign here, minus, and the value is I1. But then we know I2 and we know I1. What is I2? I2 is minus 46. And then I1 is minus 20. So I'll have minus, minus 20. Okay, so we'll have minus 46, minus and minus become plus, so we'll have plus 20, and so IO here is equal to minus 26 ampere. And I think that is the final answer for this problem, which is minus 26 ampere. Okay, and I think that's all for this problem. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.